Não foi aí. Authentic combat from all of Europe, from all of recorded history, as best we have access to. So, we use things like textbooks, manuscripts, paintings, art, literature of all kinds, to interpret how the fighting was done back in the day. Yes, you can hurt someone by hitting them with a sword, but it's really nice to get the exact knowledge of how they wanted you to hit each other with swords. Next part of that is, it's a real martial art. The most important thing of martial arts is not dying. So, everything we do is based around safety, precision, as well as mechanical efficiency, and then we worry about being deadly a little later on. So, uh, my guys here, so, oh, sorry, I'm very rude. My name is Jonathan Sparrow. Those tickets for the second half. By the way, uh, for the benefit of this, I think you're a friendly crew. You can call me Spoogles if you have to, okay? So, that's the internet nickname. So. <laughs> I can have good vibes all night. Yeah, so now. Okay, so, oh. so, uh, oh, so oh, and <laughs> settled. So, this is Ben and Stuart. We're going to be uh, taking you through some demonstrations of the material. We're going to be doing a little history lesson, a little bit of Q and A, putting some things in context. We're going to show you some of our fighting stuff, and then later on, we're going to give you all a go if you wish. So, we brought along the not quite real swords for you guys uh, to have a little dance with us here in the hall afterwards, so we're going to go for a while. Uh, like I said, have a little bit of history lesson, uh, answer some questions, give you guys a handle of the real stuff. We're going to take a quick break around 4 o'clock, get the chairs out of the way, and you guys can all come back and start learning to duel properly. All sound good? Yeah. 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 Excellent. Okay, so, my main area of study is... Sorry, I'm just getting a bit thirsty. Okay? My main area of study is uh, ge Germanic fighting traditions of the Holy Roman Empire. Okay, not sure how well read you are. The cool thing about the Holy Roman Empire is that it was neither holy nor Roman nor an empire. <laughs> Basically, that middle bit of Europe between about 1300 and 1600. Okay, so we've got three to four hundred years of guys with fantastic moustaches and appetites for beer being very violent to each other. Okay, this is part of the society of the age. So, you had all these different city states, all of these different towns and you had your guild system there. So you had guilds of merchants and tradesmen and all the rest of it. And one of the highlights for my purposes is the fighting guilds, Fechschule, literally fight schools. And in these places you'd have wise men, scholars, or indeed very well-spoken thugs like myself, who'd figured out how to hurt people and not be hurt. And these were a valuable commodity because this is in the middle of the Renaissance. It's Italy gets all the credit for the Renaissance, Germany was doing really well as well. And the thing about being a Renaissance man, being one of these citizens of modern Holy Roman Empire Germany, was that you had to be good at everything. You had to try and learn as much as you could. So, you weren't just a tradesman, you were also a scholar, and a musician, and a linguist, and an artist, and an athlete, and a soldier. So it was expected, if you were in these towns, that you'd be able to take care of yourself. Maybe not brilliantly, but when they blew the whistles and lit the beacons and rang the bells, you could run back to your umbrella stand, pull out your halberd, and join the militia. Okay? And part of this is... Sorry, just before I get slightly racist, do we have any Germans in the room? Nein. <laughs> <laughs> Bitter. Okay, so... This is why Germans are still a bit weird today, because they're coming from this medieval mindset. Everyone's smart, everyone's sensible, Everyone's soldiers, which means in town, everyone's armed. You are packing all the time. Whether it be a little knife, a little dagger, your sexy long sword that you paid the equivalent of a Ferrari to buy, or a big hefty club with nails in it. Whatever you've got, you've got some kind of tool on you for dealing with the riffraff. On the assumption that an armed society is a polite society. Don't mess with me, I'll shank you. Okay? <laughs> So part of the rules of being a citizen of the Holy Roman Empire, especially if you are a man about town, 
read your Robert Heinlein, your Starship Troopers, you know, there's a difference between a citizen and a civilian. If you're a, if you're a citizen, you must be genteel and you must be polite. And since this is medieval Germany, this means every time you meet a stranger, you must buy them a drink. And if anyone offers you a drink, you must have it. So, why I'm thirsty. Next thing is, if you're in public, you're armed. So my lads are here, you see, they're bearing their steel proudly, okay? And the last part is, polite society is armed. You have to respond to any insult with violence. Any slight against your character as a man of town must be answered with at least the threat of a fight. So, what we're going to do is, we're going to get ourselves ready, and we're going to show you a little bit of what that's about. Okay? So, just before... Oh... Watch yourself, Quarko! <laughs> so, you going to spill my pint, Chief? Yes, you have a problem with that. Yes, I do. I was drinking that. You going to get me a new one? No. Well, I want something. It's going to be silver or it's going to be steel. I choose steel. I didn't think this through. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's luck. Nah. Oh! <laughs> nope, it's skill. And beer. What <laughs> 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 the? No! <laughs> ah! No chance. <laughs> you done? It's my best feature. It's your biggest feature. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, you might do better than that. Oh, cheers, yeah. Uh, I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> Cool, thank you. A gentleman and a scholar. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you think that'll make a difference? Yeah, I'll cut you down to size. despite throwing short at each other, because murder was always illegal. You have to respond with violence, but if you kill the guy, you're still a criminal. So you have to draw a fine line between drawing blood and drawing the guillotine later on. So, let's have a little bit of a chinwag about what just happened there. So, weapons we're using here, these are long swords, okay? If anyone wants to call this a broadsword, we are going to have problems. <laughs> okay? There is no such thing as a broadsword until about 1720, and it's a Scottish weapon only. Can you hoist one up, please? That is a broadsword. It is a straight Scottish sword with the fancy basket that you charge down from the hills with and slay a redcoat. That's a broadsword. This is a longsword. Even if it's really wide, it's still a longsword. Okay? Reason for this is they're quite long. Okay? Everything else, down to my waist, this up to my sternum, this is a nice big sword. This is now a stage in technology and metallurgy, where the weapons are getting bigger and sharper and more rigid and lighter. They're being better made, so that you can stick it in your sheath, 
said the vicar to the nun, and you can swagger around with this around town all day. I look pretty pimp like this, I'm enjoying it. Okay, so it's just there. So this is your swagger, this is what you've got. You could always tell when there are a bunch of lads on the town in medieval Germany, because you could hear them swashing down the street, literally, all their steel, ching, 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 as they swag. So the word swash, as in swashbuckler, comes literally from bashing your sword and your buckler together as you swagger down the street. So that kind of daring do heroism, Errol Flynn down the staircase and uh, all your pirate films of the golden age, yeah, they're swashbuckling, but they're about 400 years too late. Okay, so swashbuckling is a medieval idea. So this is your longsword. Uh, ben has a really nice Scottish style one with a nice quatrefoil quillions. We thought we'd bring you nice toys to play with because we're doing a nice Scotia convoy. So, what we're looking at is the mechanics of why this works. Obviously, throwing a piece of steel at someone will hurt them. Now, I'm going to be sensible, okay? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, however, we can just beat them with it, but if we're going to do that, we might as well use a club or an axe. Swords are clever. And this is what our fencing guild masters, our, our Fechtmeister, the fight masters of the day, figured out. You can use a sword better. And for this, you need to think of an axe, a knife, and a whip all at the same time. This is just getting kinkier and kinkier. <laughs> I'm either doing really well or really badly today. Okay. Wow. So, I'm going to give Ben a really bad cut. Sorry, you've seen he's put his retard hat on. That's my target, okay? So I'm going to give Ben a really bad cut. Oh. Okay, so that might give him a wicked scar on his eyebrow, but it doesn't do much. Okay? I'm going to give Ben an even worse cut. Okay? And now I'm going to try and just whip him with it. Again, flesh wound only, no real damage. What I'm going to do is add these together. I'm going to chop in like an axe, wrench through like a saw, and then flick out like a whip. And even the minor impact of this is enough to deliver a blow that will go straight through the skull and split something vital in the head, break the clavicle, go through the collarbone, into the body, hit some organs, or fillet all the flesh off an arm or a leg, immobilizing someone instantly. And that's what we're seeking. We want to be as efficient as possible. If anyone's starting to go pale and go green, escort them to the bathroom now, okay? I have had people go sick describing injuries. So, you'll all get a go of this later on, by the way. So, instead of just going, I'm gonna hit you with my sword, boink, I'm gonna add up together motions. And this is the things we start learning. We cast like a fishing rod, we push forwards and pull down like a saw through a tree, and then we make sure we put a little flick on the bottom, whoosh, down towards the floor. If this hits anything solid, like a bone or a big dense mash of flesh, it'll push him away. Chop, saw, slice, and that puts somebody down. Now knowing that, he's gonna to wanna to stop this happening. The defense is the best thing that you can do. You can try dodging, but it's not very good. Just duck out of the way. Uh, the tip always works, okay? Shanking someone doesn't get much smarter. Cutting can be very clever. Stabbing's pretty basic, okay? So, he's gonna to wanna to defend, and the best thing he can do is to build a wall. I'm gonna throw a cut at him, he's just gonna put his sword up to one side, cool, and lock it down there. I can't reach his head. As much as I won't try, and if I keep cutting down to his hands, it's gonna lock on the cross guard of his sword. Oh, and I've lost control of it. And things start going wrong from there. Okay, so already we're seeing it's not just waving steel at each other. These guys aren't going, ah, bang, ah, bang, and him throwing stuff back at me. We're trying to be as efficient, as mechanical as we can be. And then we start getting into really clever stuff. So, I'm gonna throw that cut at him. He's gonna pr protect himself, and he's gonna bring a nice counter attack back at me. So, bang, what's he gonna do? Okay, and here, I've built a structure above, now, Ben's a little bit taller than me. I've got the weight advantage, because I like my pies, okay? <laughs> but he can push down as hard as he likes, and I can hold this up. Okay? So, this is another part of this martial art. Building structures. Ben's not fighting me, he's fighting the floor via me. And nobody wins a fight against all of Scotland. Okay? So. We're playing with attack and defense here. This is common fencing, and this is a little concept we'll look at. If I throw a strike to him, he wants to parry. After I've stopped my motion, 
it's his turn and he throws something at me, I can throw something back at him, he can throw something back at me, I can get fancy, try and feint and cut around, and he can reposition as he needs to, and this goes off. This is what we call common fencing. This is what anyone could figure out. This is still fairly athletic. Yes, I'm doing my cuts smarter, he's being clever in his defense, but we're still just playing steel against steel. They're just bouncing off each other. Anyone can figure this out. Even your weird hill yokels who can steal a sword from someone in an ambush, they can figure this kind of stuff out and get good at it with practice. What we're now going to apply is scholarly fencing, masterful fencing. And this is the thing the guilds were really keen on. And that's the things you were seeing in our little uh, pantomime earlier. I'm not just going to fight harder, I'm going to fight smarter. So, if we do the same cut together, we both cut from our strong side, we meet in the middle and no one really has an advantage. Ah, okay, my sword's pointing above his head, his sword's pointing above my head. We can both push and try and cut through. We wind up in the terrible Star Trek, you know, Did you have to stroke it like that? <laughs> so, just cutting at each other normally kind of cancels out, doesn't really do anything. I'm now going to fight smarter, not harder. Hey, I win. Stick it straight up. <laughs> you can do other pose. Do not move the other pose. I have a wild gunner behind me. Oh, you're wet. Yeah, I was outside. I take it it's pissing down with rain. It is. Ah, that's cool. I love that. That is adorable. Did you get the picture I sent you earlier? Oh, I probably have, have seen them. Uh, I will look at them soon. Uh, this is the first time I've seen them. So I think it's... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Chop. 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 Sorry. Chop. Thank you. 
hope you enjoy yourself. And, uh, are you doing the first you've done? Is there any competitions or anything? Nope, just walking It seems to be a case of I'm just picking the mitt bits. She's probably got them all. Yeah. You can't be what happened yesterday with all the puppies and those snacks. So. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I always really like your suit. It's just so big. 
It's very cool. Um, aye, so if, if we stopped, um, the, everybody just gave up being covered and just made raise over like £500. Pounds. So we're doing it one day, we're doing like a big thing. In comparison. It's all good. Thin liners. You look so cool. Thank you. I will feed them. Like toys and charities. I will be. So, like, my manager is just so big on charity. Oh, I can give you a hug. You're protected from my cold. You have layers. Oh, okay. I see you the other day out in suit, and I was like, but I was going for food. So, food was important. Terry. So, I'm really looking forward to it. it's awesome, Terry wants to start making, trying to make his own armour and stuff. So. Why not? Yeah. This so is only half, so. He's just interested with our folk. TVS phone. That's all it is. <laughs> well, most of it. He's got a little speaker in the back. Mm-hmm. Yep. A little camera. Is that a little GoPro? Nope. Yeah. Oh, camera's recording. Yep. Oh. <laughs> it's the murder cam. <laughs> Your next loss. <laughs> <laughs> you know what happens awesome. to you. <laughs> Evidence is up there. <laughs> so we're trying to get the murder victims. Are you in competition with Rogar for murder victims? Oh, I, I still win. I got, <laughs> yeah, I got the more scares than he does. What did I do? Why is that an insult? I think what people will do is that they'll kind of bite their tongue. You have succeeded at door. I knew. You're in a very big, small amount of armor. You're in the way. I am. You want to go this way? Yes. I'll have to catch up later for a drink. Yeah, go, go. Yeah, I'll be right.